What is up, guys? We are back with another couple episodes of Going For It. Uh, you will see your first appearance of Mike Spillane in uh, this round of uh, some Going For It podcast. Uh, you'll also see a couple new segments I did with Craig. Uh, we called it Carry On Craig, where Craig kind of just gets on a soapbox and talks about whatever he wants, which is basically just the podcast, but uh, a little more a little more focused from Craig for a couple minutes. And In the Pocket, which is a breakdown of the QBs in that division that we talk about in the offseason, just kind of how we feel about them, rank them, a lot of top fives, all that good stuff. So we have even a little bit of draft talk. So that is what we got going on in going for it. At this time, uh, you guys can hope to see some more content more regularly from us. As you can see, I got my setup finally ready to go. I'm repping my New York Giants. All of this stuff was recorded pre-free agency and pr like right after the J.J. Watt signing. So we don't have anything super duper up to date, but I wanted to release it anyway so you guys could get our takes and see how we're feeling. Uh, that will be coming to a screen near you right now. Uh, so to get away from quarterbacks, um, early breakout players, players that we think – are going to break out this year, and we have no reason to think that they're going to break out this year. Tell me it's John Runyon, Ted Runyon, John <laughs> Tunyon. <laughs> Robert Tunyon. Robert Tunyon. No, I... <sighs> Breakouts are fun. Breakouts are fun because I like... This really leans into, not because I'm intention trying to force a segue, I'm not, but I, I, I buy cards, and I buy cards right. based on guys I think will break out. And, and through my history, I am very mediocre at choosing. Very, very mediocre. Like, I went hard on Reggie Bush. That was eh. That was oopsies. But he then had good, I, uh, Dolphins years. His Dolphins he years. He did, and he won a Super Bowl. Like, his career was fine. It's just he wasn't going to, like, make you money in cards. But I also bought, like, LeBron James cards early. So that were, you know, that was good. And I've had a few, I'm trying to think football wise. I, I bought a lot of Calvin Johnson. I fell in love with Calvin Johnson. That one worked out. Those are, was, yeah, he was good. Are. He, he, he's hall of fame credentialed kind of guy, you know, in, in terms of breakout, it's tough because I, I look mean, at guys. He's in the hall of fame now. That's a real thing. Oh yeah. From this last season, yeah, this, this last this class. past year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God, I, I, I always liked him. The part, the just you mega. Did. I can, I can oh. confirm. Craig has been on the Megatron yeah. train since yeah. the beginning. Beginning. The absolute beginning from Georgia Tech, which makes no sense because I'm not a Georgia Tech fan by any means. I just thought he played in such a way. This is the reason I was a Peyton Manning fan. It wasn't because I like Tennessee. It was, oh, my God, that guy plays in a way that gets me wanting to watch a game. I thought that about Calvin Johnson. This is going to sound weird because it's a two-edger. I think DK Metcalf has that opportunity, yet I still think – He's going to come down a year. I think he's like the stock market. I think he needs a pullback before he goes to the moon. If I'm uh, using the Reddit wall. The moon. Yeah. yeah. His what he's capable of is to the moon. But what you see, I don't know that he's on the right team. And this is not a knock on Russ. I, I don't think he's in the right circumstance. So he's a guy that. I wish I bought a lot of cards on because I was high on him in my friend circle and in my fantasy drafts and everything like that. And he had a, what a really amazing like first six games mm -hmm. uh, last year and then went super quiet. And then now he's known just for running down a guy 90 yards, which is not the right thing to be known for, by the way, as a wide receiver. He has the dropsies. And that's why I think we're going to see do another the down here. But I think there's a breakout potential there with him. I really like and this is, again, a guy that people are already on, but I think we're seeing this is going to be year three of A.J. Brown. And the third year receiver move is a thing. And if they really find their sweet spot, I think you see AJ Brown kind of crack whole new territories of like, we got to talk about him. We got to talk about him up there with these top dudes. You know, I don't, I'm not saying he's going to be as good as Tyreek Hill, because that seems to be like the only guy or D hop. But I think yeah. you could make some arguments that he's that he's going to be three, four, you know, and is that the kind of breakout you're looking for? I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know. Is it I, I'm torn on these breakout ones because I'm look, I'm thinking through the guys I bought rookie cards of quite literally. Right. And we, we've got such an interesting year. So maybe you want to like, is it by position or you is there a running back you think is going to break out? So I well, first to DK, 
His rookie year, 2019, he had 900 yards receiving, seven touchdowns. But that was the very hot and cold year. Last year, he got 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. But a lot of that. I think it was very early. It was super strong. Very fun. And then, and then, yeah, I agree with you. I do think he's in the wrong system. I think he needs to be in a place, which is a place I'm sure Russell would like to go, where they throw the ball first. Pete Carroll wants to run the ball and control the clock. And DK is like, give me the ball 10 times a game, if not more. Right. And I think that's where you see his 1,500, 1,700 yards receiving, where you're like, this dude is on. Un- I think he could do a 1,500 yard season. Oh, he's got- that, that's in what his I mean. sleep, like, he's got the we're talking set. 17, 19, like gross. Yeah. This guy's an animal, human person. He can have a Randy Moss level numbers if yeah. in the correct system. But I, I think we're about to see a pullback year for, for I don't know why. I'm looking at everything and I'm like, this should be DK's year. It's not going to be. There's volatility with Russ. What are the odds that Russ stays and wants to do a fuck you year? Not good. Mm-hmm. Not good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I mean, one of the ones that I hope, and this isn't just to get you excited, it's just what it looked like is Daniel Jones has an opportunity to break out. He has a real strong opportunity. Saquon's coming back healthy, it seems. It He's does seem got right. some things. Hopefully they get him one more receiver and Evan Ingram stops sucking. I don't know. Need a number one receiver. That's what we, we need. need one. Number one guy. But with one guy. Daniel Jones becomes someone everyone should look at. And I'm not just saying that to tee you up. I, bu- You guys were so bummed. You and Spillane were so bummed when you took him. And he has shown some sparks yes. of what is possible. Then he also showed some things that were so bad. And he's got an opportunity. I think he's on a weird breakout this list. This is a year three. Yeah, this is a year, a three, year three where it's like you either you need to make it this year or it's broken. And now I don't know if he's going to get the start, but Jameis has opportunity this year. That if he's in there, boy, does he not? Sur- he's surrounded with the talent. Oh, he's yeah. surrounded with the guys. So he could have a strong year. A strong I was going to say my breakout is a, a Saquon comeback. I think Saquon comes in this year. And this is, this Love. is partial homerism and hope. But it's I think this guy sat down for two years. Two years ago, he got had the high ankle sprain injury for most of the season. And then the last three or four weeks of the season, he got healthy and had more rushing yards in that period of time than anyone else in the NFL. That's right. Last season. ACL. Boom. Immediately. No chance at doing anything. Right. And he's watched two years of this Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara. Uh, Dalvin, Dalvin Cook, Cook, all these names that are being put a- ahead of him, and I think he's going to come in and be like, no. This oh, is, he's got some stuff to This is my position. Him and McCaffrey are very interesting comebacks uh, this year for for hopefully both of them staying healthy. The, we, we got some very good running backs in the NFL right now, and some young guys that are going to want to try to stay relevant, right? Your Miles Sanders, oh, yeah. your Jonathan Taylors. I don't think they do, by the way, stay relevant. But I think they're going to— <laughs> Well, I think they were opportunistic, right? They were in the top tier because the top tier was diluted by injury. It's true. It's true. Um, I'm very interested to see what happens. I think there's a lot of a lot of possibility this year. It's really hard for me personally to pick pick a breakout just because I don't. What is training camp going to look like for these guys? You know, from from Stop. last year to this year, if if we get a lot of people vaccinated real soon, there's another vaccine on the market. And these guys can do in-person camp and they can get on the field multiple times a day and like do all of those things safely and correctly. Then I think we do see big steps for a lot of young guys. I'll, I'll even say, I think Joe Burrow comes in and is like, I'm a yeah. top eight quarterback in the NFL I'll right show now you. in yeah. year two. I'll show like, you. Yeah. Here I am. Um, but it, it, it's all very dependent upon where are you at on um now this might be not year four i could be off where are you at on josh jacobs <clears throat> josh jacobs running back in the vegas. raiders right raiders. vegas yeah uh i almost said the other place that we don't talk about um because they're not there anymore uh i i think john gruden is out of touch with coaching yeah well you're right i, I don't think, know why he came back I, I think he had a really sweet gig, 
with ESPN. I think he had a sweet gig with doing his, his quarterback camps. I think that was the shit I Googled and like YouTubed constantly. I loved watching his quarterback like corner stuff where he brought them in, had them run different things, different drills and stuff on the on the board. And that was the most go out fun thing it. he ever did when he did the 25 minute segments with those quarterbacks. Yeah, it was awesome. It was great. I loved it. And he's coaching again. And I think he's so far out of touch with the game and what it needs to be that any player in any system he has is going to be poo poo. I think the quarterback might have been. I think fine. you helped me there. I think you just helped me with my fantasy drafting. Did did I? Because it, there are teams that are black holes, yes. and if, if for for fantasy, meaning like New York Giants. <laughs> well, not true on Saquon. Not on um, Saquon because he's going to get the rock thirty-five times a game. Right. My phone in the air awesome. or on the ground, it's going to be Saquon Barkley. Correct. Saquon has fantasy value to the to the highest levels, but. There are teams that become black holes, and I think you're you you're that could be one of those things you need to put on a put on the wall that you you said it because first of all they signed a ten year deal with Gruden and so long it's too long and that doesn't mean they couldn't snip it or whatever it's not all guaranteed or whatever but yeah I think he might be bad for those players ceilings I just think he's got that old school mentality and that's great I love a guy that like Dan Campbell in Detroit. I love a, a punch you in the mouth kind of guy. I'm all for that. But there also needs to be guys that are like, hey, like Eric uh, Biamieni in Kansas City, who's yeah. like, yeah, we're going to punch him in the mouth with Clyde Edward Lair. But also, Patrick Mahomes is going to throw this ball 40 fucking times. That's because right. Because we have this is what Travis the game Kelsey, is now. Tyree Kill and McCole Hart. We have the guys you don't even know are better than guys on other teams. Correct. And we Sammy still Watkins have. gets no love on that team and is was at one point like people were like, he's the next big thing in in Kansas City. He's a fucking guy. That's right. And I fully believe they lost that because of the offensive line injuries. Correct. That, that Super Bowl. That Super Bowl would have been not necessarily a blowout. I don't think Casey blows out. I think we would have seen a shootout if Patty wasn't running for his life. Also, not to if receivers rehash. remembered how to catch the ball. That's right. And that includes Tyreek and Travis, which is very surprising. Yeah. In the face, they were hit twice. It happened two separate times. Two touchdowns were in the grill. One of them, the greatest incompletion of all time. Correct. Accurate. 100%. Um, So, yeah, I think that's as as far as breakout players. Josh Jacobs, I had such high hopes for him. Me too. And then I saw him go to Vegas and then Oakland. And I just... I think he could be a thousand yard guy, but that's not what the that's not what the position is anymore. You need to be doing twelve hundred and well, and, and isn't that what, I'm, I'm glad you said that because last year was such a ye- weird year for running backs. We didn't have well. I'll do this. Guess how many guys were over twelve hundred last year? Three, two. Ooh, I went low, and it was even lower than that. Derrick Henry at 2,027, Dalvin at 1,557, then Jonathan Taylor at 1,169. There are only nine guys, and I really don't want to count Lamar because he's number nine, so eight over 1,000. We had a weird running back year, and I think part of that's the injury. You had McCaffrey go down. You had Saquon go down, and it is a throwing league. Now, Kamara was close, and he also gets a ton of catches. Yeah. So I'm not – he's still top, top, top kind of guy but it's it's a weird space teams that have very strong running backs aren't winning as often anymore and i think that's changed a lot of that offensive mentality too to use that use your quarterback the right way and you're gonna win you're gonna win and that's that's the thing that's the issue i have with the pete carroll and like i'm very well read in this russell situation and like have have read the hearsay i do love russ I've read all the the gossipy kind of things like Russ did this thing and Pete Carroll said this and and I I take all of it with a grain of salt. But Pete Carroll's system even back in the USC days was we're going to run the ball, we're going to control the clock and we're going to dictate the game at our speed. That's not what this league is anymore. No. And that's why Seattle hasn't won a a, a playoff series for a while. That's because right. if you run the ball in the NFL, you're behind. Do you know yes. why? Because they can get down the field half as fast. Their guys are more rested. And then come the fourth quarter, it, it don't matter. You have to you, throw the ball anyway. I couldn't agree more. 
the only anomaly is Derek, and I don't know if Correct. he can sustain it. I don't even know if he can sustain it. The amount of carries is obscene over the last three years. He's some sort of freak that keeps Tennessee relevant, even when they clearly are missing in other places. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the Adrian Peterson effect. Yeah. AP elevated those Minnesota teams for so long before he before he left, and I think we're seeing the same thing with Derrick Henry. Man, but you're dead how on much? how much wear and tear is on that body because Derrick Henry did what Derrick Henry's doing in Alabama. Yes. He did. So he's a freak. He's a freak. Yes, and he put, absolutely. We, he's not. What is it? One more year or two where we determine he is that guy for this 10 year period. He's the AP. How many, how many more seasons does he have to do it? I think it's only one. I would, I would argue. I think it's going to be two really? unless, unless he takes them on a journey this year, unless he takes them to a championship game, to a division title and is just hands down the guy. I think it's two because you you, you got to win I'm some. So sorry. What is that? <laughs> oh my god. Stop. Babying it up right now? Is there baby things happening? I don't know what that is. What is it? I was looking up Derrick Henry's stats and that <laughs> happened. There was baby stuff that happened. That was on ESPN, mind you. And I hit mute. I'm so sorry about that. I no, wanted to see his career stats because I think they're good. They are. Okay. I, I I believe them to be good. But Okay, but, so he's in his first two years were eh. Mm -hmm. but he was 20, split backfield. Right. And 2018, where he got 16 games, 12 starts, things started happening. 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Then it goes 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns. 2,000 yards, 17 touchdowns. You're not, you're, you're more right than me. It's two more. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, I just think he needs two more years, but it's, it's, so we're talking about years seven and eight for him need to be these uh, massive. Six and seven. Six so and he's seven. He's put five in. I'm, it's, it wasn't as many carries as I thought. So last year was, but he had 300 the year before and then 200. So he's not at like the three years of 300 yet. This would be that third year that if they put that on him and he does well, we might be seeing year seven be like, oh, shit, you're you're AP of the modern era. Right. And that that for me would solidify it. But yeah, I just right. don't I don't I don't know if a guy can take because his even if he's running to only 200 carries, he's taking punishment. Oh, he's taking damage. He's a guy that takes damage. He's just monstrous and built right. in a way that he's, he's I'm huge. less concerned for him. Then I am him and Saquon have a body build. Now, nothing stops you from tearing an ACL. We know that. Correct. But they have a body build that means they can take some damage from normal tackling. And if they avoid the, the CLs and the actual like ligaments and breaks, they can have 10 year running back careers. And that's not. A oh, thing. yeah. That's not. A no, thing they're they're built for for power and they just also happen to be very fast. That's right. But once the once it's a it's the Frank Gore, once the the speed leaves, you still have to tackle them, and that's not a pleasant experience. Right. Oh, I love Frank so, Gore. He's so likable yeah. at this point in his career. Oh, absolutely.